Welcome back for my video 5.3 in my Asteroids creation series. Um, and this video is largely optional for um, the completion of the project. Um, in this video, we're going to look at refining some of the spawning object code, um, and then also looking at putting a uh, putting the timer to use so that if the player doesn't defeat the asteroids in the time given for that wave, the next wave spawns on top of the player. Uh, and so it kind of puts pressure on the player. Now, uh, like I said, this is largely optional. Like the, If you were to skip this video, none of the r future videos would be harmed by not having this. But this does add some good content to asteroids. So let's uh, begin and let's take a look at first I want to refine um, my spawn objects method with some kind of cooler uh, tricks to it. So if we go check out the spawn objects, um, we're actually kind of hard coding uh, the tags that I want to be considered to be things that I would have to re-pick a position based off of. And there's some neat features in um, a lot of languages that allow us to make a parameter dynam a, a dynamically sizing array based upon the inputs. And so let's take a look at this. Uh, this wouldn't have been something that was ever explored in a computer, like a computer science one class. So the keyword for this is params. And we'll make a string array called bad tags, which is a lot like what we had here before we had this bad tags array, but now we're making it an input parameter where we're able to um, specify the tags we want to be considered invalid spawn locations. So that does mean we need to tweak this to preserve the functionality of the method. For example, I don't want to have to change these spawn object calls if I don't really want to. I still want to keep the possibility for a default set of bad tags. So what we can do is we'll say if bad tags is, I guess for some reason, null, or if it is length of zero, then what we want to do is actually declare a new bad tags array. Now you can't use the shortcut declaration. Uh, we do need to instantiate a new version of bad tags. So it's a new string array, and then we can use this shorthand. Uh, and so that will allow me to still use the defaults if this parameter is either not included or if we're past a null array, which could happen. So, so we'll say that this is restore bad tags, bad rags, to the defaults three ta two tags if it's passed as empty. Uh, all right, and so what that means is in a case like this, there is no fourth parameter being passed in. So bad tags receives no inputs and bad tags would actually be declared as a length zero array. It would still be declared, but it's, it's size zero. And so since it's size zero, um, that means we're going to instead override it with this previous set. So we can hit play. Well, it'd be kind of hard for us to tell. Um, let's actually print out the tags that are being um, displayed. So we'll do if uh, debug mode is greater than or equal to, let's just make this debug mode three because this is pretty excessive. Um, Unfortunately, I don't, off the top of my head, remember the C-sharp shortcut declaration for printing out the contents of an array. So we're just doing it the old way. Which still has value to be able to see. So we're just building a string to print out. Make sure that fix that typo there. All right, so it um, builds up this array and then it's gonna print out the list of, of bad tags 
um, anytime we spawn an object. So we should see that because these are still these spawn object calls do not have a fourth parameter, it is going to still print use these two default tags. Uh, so we can save it. We might need to check to make sure that our debug mode is set to, to three to verify. And then when we jump back in, we can then see that when I am spawning these enemies, I can see my bad tags list here is just player and asteroid. Now let's go and instead uh, let's pass some parameters and, and see this uh, in action. So I want to go tweak the one inside of um, the manual spawn, the one where I press R. And let's also make it so that that only works if we are in a debug mode of two or greater. So you can't normally just press R to spawn asteroids if we've turned off debug mode. But we could then specify our tags and we could say that um, the bad spawns are um, asteroid, uh, player, and um, I don't know, we'll just add player projectile. So again, we might need to be careful to see that that's the correct tag. Honestly, I don't remember off the top of my head. Um, yeah, player projectile spelled like that. So we could actually specify a list of however many tags we want. So those are considered bad spawn locations. So now it won't spawn on top of an asteroid, the player, or one of the player's projectiles. And we should see that inside of the actual um, console when we're doing this. So it's not gonna affect the normal ones because I only put it into the one when I press R. But when I press R, you can see that this bad tags list now includes player projectile, whereas the original one does not include player projectile. So we're basically creating a dynamic list, a dynamic array um, by specifying it like that. And so that's just a change right here on the spawn object method. I've included a fourth parameter called params string array bad tags. And that will allow you to have any number of input parameters being condensed into a string array. And if you don't have any, then it will um, be size zero. All right, so that looks kind of cool. And we want to then actually implement what we're here for, which is um, putting a timer on, on the waves. So let's go look at the update method, and we're going to handle the timer here. So we'll do it right here during the wave management. If wave time left is greater than zero, wave time left minus equals time dot delta time. So we'll take away um, time from it as, as we would any counter. And we can, just for viewing sake, uh, if debug mode is greater than or equal to one, we will then print it out. This is gonna be incredibly spammy. So perhaps this should be a debug mode three thing. Uh, Cause this is going to spam the console pretty hard because it's going to be spitting this out every single frame. You know what, debug four, really spammy. Um, So we should be able to test this and we can at least watch that timer go down. So let's set debug mode to four and we can watch this timer tick. So hit save, go back to Unity, it compiles the script. Then we can hit play. And in the bottom, we can actually watch that wave time decrease like a normal timer. Um, when we get to building a UI for this, we can actually t like link this to a UI element so we can actually have some kind of clock on the screen. Um, but you know, we've got our time ticking down there. And when we destroy this wave, it should appropriately reset back to a value of, uh, I think it's going up to like 60 or something on the next wave. So we're destroying our asteroids. Um, we've got like 27 seconds left. So when I defeat this, 
it jumps down to cleared wave, well, because it's part of the other stuff, and you can see that it reset the clock. Uh, and so that seems to be good. And let's continue to expand on this idea. So I'm gonna take debug mode back down to, you know what, we'll go with zero. I'll go to one. Uh, and we are going to put in some code to detect if we failed to defeat the wave. So let's go and this part right here, where I've got the to do implement the wave time limit. We'll do that. Um, we'll do that after checking if you've defeated the enemies. So right after we check to see if you've defeated all the enemies in the wave, if wave time left is less than or equal to zero and wave loading is false. So essentially you ran out of time. So we got our two conditions, end of wave, you defeated all the enemies, and time's up. So if the time's up, let's kind of take some of these things here and keep them. Um, we'll just, instead of saying cleared wave, we'll say something like failed wave. Um, wave loading will be set to true. The prep timer, I'm um, gonna make it one second, so it's really about to spawn asteroids onto you. And we do not want to play with the enemies left and the time left because we want to keep those enemies. These are going to add to your total enemy count now. That enemy count does not get reset uh, and neither does the time. The time will get reset during the, the spawn wave. But um, So if you fail the wave, you'll get notified of it and it's going to pop the next wave in one second. In, even if you did defeat the rest of the asteroids, it's not going to impact anything because this won't trigger again because wave loading is true. So you've got one second to take care of your business before the next set of waves, the asteroids spawn. Um, all right, let's see what happens with that. So we'll hit save and let's go get this wave of asteroids to pop on us. So right now I do not actually have the timer ticking, um, but I know it should be in the ballpark of about, um, 60 seconds. So I'm, I can kind of watch some of this. I can see uh, as I destroy stuff, I can watch my enemies count go up. So I have four enemies in the level right now. And I will dilly dally until something happens. So we should be watching the bottom here for a notification that the wave has failed. After that, we have one second before it spawns our next wave. And I think my cat is hoping for me to fail the wave too. So there we go. It said, um, failed wave one spawning wave two, wave two has spawned. Now I have five enemies. So in theory, I should still be able to continue uh, winning the game. I mean, I don't really need to worry about accidentally dying either because we don't have any uh, damage from asteroids yet. My cats are kind of sad that I'm ignoring them. Alright, so we defeated that, and it said cleared wave 2, and then now it spawns wave 3. So it acknowledged that we were still be able, able to win the game, or continue back on, despite failing the first time. And that's actually kind of what we wanted to get out of this. So like, you can fall behind, but yet, if you get caught up, you're back to clearing waves, and you're back to being successful. So that's kind of a neat feature that opens the door for playing around with like bonuses for defeating the wave within a certain amount of time. Um, and then the last thing I want to just look at just to experiment with is if you defeat the wave in time, we could always set the player back to the center of the screen as just kind of a safety measure. So they don't spawn in the middle of that, that hailstorm of 
I don't know what, 20 little baby asteroids. So when we're about to spawn the wave, uh, we can always check to see if the wave enemies left is zero. We always do less than or equal to zero. And that means you've actually won the wave by defeating the enemies. Rather than times up. And so if you did defeat them by, if you beat the wave by defeating the enemies, uh, we can reset the player to the middle. Um, and if this feels jarring to you, you don't need to use it. I'm hesitant to call this player because I may end up add a play, adding, adding a player, player variable at some point. Um, so I use the game object, find object with tag. I'll find the player. Keep it in mind, if you happen to put two players in the game, this could be problematic. Um, but we'll say player object dot transform dot position is equal to a new vector three at zero zero zero. So this will reset the player back to the middle of the screen if you defeat all of the asteroids. Um, and then that way they're kind of safe from anything coming to hit them. So when we defeat these, wherever, so it doesn't warp us back immediately. It gives us, it, we get to fly around with our three seconds until the next wave spawns. And so now when we defeat this one, we fly around for three seconds and it's gonna snap us back to the center. I mean, we keep our momentum, which is still kind of cool. Uh, and then the game continues. So that does allow you to kind of spawn some more dangerous stuff on the periphery if you really wanted to in future waves. Um, but it still kind of gives us a neat little thing that we can do with the player. Um, it does get around some of that issue of needing like invulnerability. Um, but I think I will try to give a shout out um, for in invulnerability as like a, a bonus video after we've completed the core um, Asteroids gameplay. Um, because invulnerability isn't necessarily needed, uh, and it is a little extra code. It's going to be about 10 minutes of work to add. All right, so we will wrap this up here. This was a largely optional video for adding a time penalty to the game, and then also showing um, so kind of like a cool way to write code to be able to have a parameter or have a, a um, parameters turn into a string array or any other type of ray, honestly. Um, so anyway, thank you for watching. And the next video we will do, we'll actually start to cover the UI um, because I do want to do the UI. And then once we have the UI set up, we can then kind of, we can finish it up with um, actually respawning the player when they hit an asteroid and then declaring game over when you run out of lives. Uh, so next up is the UI and I'll see you then.